Okay, welcome to the uh, LANA program. So we have a couple of tabs here we're going to show you throughout this course. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these tabs are just as if they were one big block of, co of code because we are running a continuous loop. So all of these are just different functions. And depending on what function we call, we go to that specific tab. So here we see monitor temp, which is to monitor the temperature function. So we go to monitor temperature. We have a monitor motion function, which goes to motion, quite simply, and monitor moisture, which goes into the moisture tab. All these other tabs get stored, uh, get called along within these other functions. So we'll see how they um, work with each other. But the first step is to go to the very top, um, just kind of briefly read the description of this program. Uh, it integrates the readings from the sensor pack and updates the Cayenne dashboard. And as we saw in the previous videos, uh, the Cayenne dashboard has certain channels that you can control with widgets and sliders, and you can see the sensor data. Uh, time data transport is key, and we'll show you how we do that in this case. So here we have uh, just the uh, the energy um, a necessary code uh, to use for our launch pad. This kind of comes already when you open up a a new document. It mostly defines the libraries that it's going to use. And so here we are using a OPT light sensor, a BME sensor. This is Cayenne, uh, Cayenne print so that it'll print to the serial port. So we have a debug motion, debug times, and debug moisture. And if you change these to one, you can see uh, different things coming out in the serial port. Here, these are our header, fire, uh, header files defined, in, um, defined here for one, the Cayenne using timers, using uh, the PCA9685. This is one that I created so that I can just neatly put in all the variables that I've defined in here. Finally, you have a uh, wire, which is for I2C uh, when we communicate with the sensor pack, which um, is the OPT uh, light sensor and the BME 280 sensor. So we kind of talked about how we set up the Wi-Fi credentials here. Uh, but just to recap, this is your uh, Wi-Fi SSID and your uh, Wi-Fi password. Username, password, and client ID, all of which you get from the Cayenne dashboard. Here we're defining our PWMs, um, our yeah, our PCA96 to have an address of 41, and that is selectable in the hardware section uh, on the fan out pins that are kind of towards the side of the LANA board. So if you look at that, you can see how we set these. Here's another example. If you wanted to add another bo another board, uh, you just change the address to 42, and you would change the name to PWM2. And we'll see how you would use those two in the other sections if you wanted to, say, add another uh, another PDM driver. Here's simple timer. Uh, this is a simple timer class. And I am creating a local variable called timer. Here we're going to use this in our energy mode. Uh, we'll explain that a little bit later. So first things first is the code or the program automatically goes to the setup. And what we do here is we initialize the serial port so that we can plug into our launch pad and kind of do some debugging. Here is where I2C begins, wire.begin. Here uh, is cayenne.begin, which is the statement that le lets us connect to the uh, dashboard. Finally, uh, we initialize all the sensors. OPT3000, the light sensor, and the BME sensor, which contains three sensors. And then we're initializing the PWM driver, which is our PCA9685. So PCA9685. And we're start we're initializing it. So this statement uses this address to connect with that driver and we set it to 60 hertz and it's 60 hertz because we have our so servos so here we're setting our pin modes 
Um, we want this to be an output so that we can control the red LED. I, I don't believe we use this, but this is just an example if you wanted to. The PIR pin, which is our motion sensor pin, which is connected to, if we go to, okay, so let's see how we have PIR pin. We set it as an input. If we go to variables, we see that PIR pin is pin 5. So pin 5, pin 5 in our launch pad, <laughs> that'd be funny if it changed to 500, but pin 5 in our launch, on our launch pad, ooh, actually this was 150, excuse me. Oh man, no, that was 500, excuse me. Okay, so um, pin 5 in our launch pad, that is a GPIO, so we access that. We have a moisture pin, which is our analog pin, and that's on pin 2. And then the heat lamp, and then um, this is to set the heat lamp low. Um, originally, we were going to put the heat lamp in this program, room 1, but we did some last minute changes, and that's only connected with the HVAC. So this essentially does nothing for you. But here, if you wanted to, say, set a time for the... So how often do you want this timer to trigger? So if you want the trigger to go off every seven seconds, you would essentially have this be in milliseconds. So if I wanted to find, if I just wanted to simply type minutes, say I want this timer to go off in, let's see what we have here. If we go to minutes, Okay, well, uh, I couldn't really find it, but minutes, uh, you would type in uh, the however many minutes you want, it will multiply times 60, times 1,000, uh, to give you that time, and then finally you would have it, um, you would enter it in this kind of format to set it for that timer. And then you have Cayenne Setup, which is another function that we call, so already we're seeing the other functions come into play. And this is initializing your HVAC temperature to be at 73 or your sorry your set point temperature to be at 73 here and then we are initializing basically all of the channels uh, in this simple in these in this simple function and we're also setting uh, the lights in this function as well okay so moving on to the loop this is necessary to have cayenne loop and timer loop uh, within the uh, within the energia loop, and what this does is every so every time it runs through, it goes into the Cayenne loop, which jumps into the the Cayenne library, and it waits for one second, and it does a bunch of due diligence, and then it has a timer dot run, which up pretty much just updates the milliseconds or the time that the the launchpad has been on for. And so here what we do is this milliseconds is the value in milliseconds of how long the launch pad has been on for. Sensor check would be our, say, desired millisecond worth of time to enter into this code. So say this right now, instead of saying it in milliseconds, let's say it was five seconds and our sensor check was at seven seconds. So right now you can see this statement is false because right now we're at five seconds and then it's not greater than seven seconds. So say this now becomes, you know, seven point, you know, zero zero one second. So now this statement is true. And so when we enter into here, now what we're doing is we're taking this seven point zero zero one uh, time and we're adding yet another seven seconds so that's going to be 14.001 and so now after this is done we go into all these functions and then we exit out and then we pretty much do the exact same comparison and this has its own specified time which is in our case five seconds but then see what happens here is now this value sensor check is 14.001 second and so now when this one 
is say already at nine seconds it's false so we won't enter into this if statement and that's how that scheme pretty much works that's just a good explanation of how that flows and so here as you see every two seconds or every five seconds pretty much nearly two seconds I know that the milliseconds um, uh, you know onboard time isn't too accurate but it is great for our usage here and so every two seconds we do all these functions and every five seconds we publish data so that is the intro to the program and that's pretty much showing you how we set things up um, not too big of a deal but you can go ahead and look at these functions in more detail and we'll show you how to how to do that in the future videos